Jesus. Love you, Jesus loves you. All right, this is uh, How Do I Know If I Am Saved. Uh, this is from the website that I now have, but either way, this is the audio version. It says, How do I know if I am saved? This is. Uh, how do I know if I am saved? What must I do to inherit eternal life? And then the greatest miracle God can do is to take an unholy man out of an unholy world, make him holy, put him back in an unholy world, and keep him holy. Leonard Ravenhill. If you know Ravenhill, that's the only definition of a Christian. True Christian. Going to heaven. <laughs> All right. How do I know if I'm saved? This is the most important question you can ever ask. Please never give up till you have completely solved it. If you have a question or disagree with me, keep seeking until you find Jesus fully and in total. Jesus loves you. You will find Jesus when you seek him with all your heart. Don't give up. <sighs> a man once asked Jesus this exact question. The man said he had kept the law. Jesus said, go and sell everything and come follow Jesus. The man went away sad because he was rich. Then Jesus said, it is impossible to be saved. That is without God. With God, everything is possible. Jesus was not saying anything new to the man. The Bible says to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and your neighbor as yourself. When the man said that he had kept the law, it was because he thought he measured up pretty good to being good. But he still felt something missing in his heart. That's why he went to Jesus. He was missing God in, in him, inside of him. He may have had an experience, he may have experienced God and followed God, but in order to have God in you, all of God in you, you have to give all of you. You have to give up everything and follow him no matter what, all of God for all of you, and then you will love God and your neighbor completely and you will be filled with the living God. People think they are pretty good, but that's not the question. There are two questions to see if you are saved. Are you as good as God? If not, you are not saved. You must admit that he is better than you, and you need the sacrifice of the God-man Jesus to cover your sins. And you need him to take over your life and live in you, to give you life. And if God is in you, and God, God is as good as God is as good as God. So you need Jesus' payment and you need Jesus in you. The second question you must ask yourself is, do I have a death certificate? There has to be a point in time when you died. At a specific time, you died to sin. You died and Jesus began to live in and through you. A person can only die once. Once you die, once you die to everything else and Jesus lives in you, that's it. You're saved. It's like an atomic bomb going off. You can feel Jesus and nothing is the same ever. The idea that you get better and better in the Christian life is ridiculous. People think that they will be made right and sinless when they go to glory. Bad news, if you aren't right when, you're, when you get there, you won't get there. It all happens in a moment of repentance at conversion. The reason people spread this lie is because they aren't converted and don't know what conversion is and or they don't see a way to get rid of their sin or they like their sin sure you do learn in the christian walk but nothing really changes i've been saved for about five years and i am the exact same as at conversion wholly devoted to jesus and following him my heart and being is 24 7 jesus that's because i died jesus lives in me does jesus get holier no Sure, Jesus has shown me more and more, but my holiness, heart, life, speech, love is still 200% er, for Jesus. The next thing I will say is that if you are asking the question of if you are saved or not, you are certainly not saved. God says his children will know. Some people who know that they're saved, some people know that they're saved and are not, that is probably worse. I'll give you an example. Before my conversion, I thought I was a pretty good person, but always felt I needed more of God and worried about hell a lot. This is always because God is trying to help you by trying to save you. It is not Satan, it's God. I will say I have a total I will say I have had total assurance since conversion with the exception of two very momentary times 
where I quickly realized I was being stupid and felt God's presence and confidence. The truth of hell is very dangerous to people who question their salvation. Wait, the truth of hell is very dangerous to people who question their salvation and to those who don't. We are commanded to examine ourselves to see if we are in the faith. You better make sure. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You start with being afraid of God and hell. The only person getting into heaven is Jesus, and the New Testament makes it clear that the end of wisdom is having Jesus in you, by giving him all of you. Then you will get into heaven because they aren't keeping Jesus out. The New Testament says about Jesus in Colossians 2.3, In whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. So we notice a few things. First, Jesus is God, as seen through Scripture, because he owns everything. Second, we notice that they are hidden in him, which means you must look and search for him. Third, we see he is the answer to salvation. Get Jesus, and you are good for eternity. So the start for every human is to be afraid of God and hell, and the end is to get all of Jesus in you. I will try to address how to do that. Ultimately, it's between you and God, and you have to work it out. But I will try to show you what I've learned from the Bible, my own salvation, and life. I apologize for making this... Hold on. I apologize for making this so long, but I am trying to be thorough starting from the beginning. <clears throat> Alright, give me a minute. <laughs> Sorry. I've addressed in my other videos, there's like four ingredients in here. Propylene glycol, vegetable glycerin, flavoring, and nicotine. I'm whatever, I do nicotine, so I don't know if it's a scent. I'll get back to this in one second. I apologize for making this so long, but I am trying to be thorough starting from the beginning. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit made the universe and made man in his image. By the way, Jesus is fully God and doesn't generate from the Father. He is equal in every way. If anything, he is greater than the Father because Philippians 2.9 says that the name of Jesus is higher than any name, including God, Yahweh, and Jehovah. <sighs> Anyways, God made man and gave him everything with one rule, don't eat, a, don't eat of a specific tree. Man was rebellious and ate it anyways. Because they did this, they lost their perfection and immortality and were impure and separated from God. This passed on to their children and to us. We were born corrupt, separated from God, going to the lake of fire, doing our own thing, where we ultimately end up in hell, burning forever consciously with no chance of ever getting out. God knew about this because he designed it and promised to make a way of escape. Jesus died for our sins and took the lake of fire for us so that we could be with him forever and could have connection with him again. The hole in our hearts filled with him, the Prince of Peace, who is love. One problem, though, believing this doesn't save you. You don't believe in something, you believe in someone. I often struggled with what belief was and if I had it. My whole life I felt like I was missing someone missing something or someone, God. I grew up around Christianity but felt I hadn't attained it. So what is belief? It goes back to the Old and New Testament and what Jesus God himself said. Love God and with everything and give up everything and you will get God. True belief and true saving faith is complete surrender to God. Believe in Jesus and you will go to heaven. If it is saving faith, which only God can give, you must pray, trust, and hope like it's all up to God. And you must ask, seek, and knock like it's all up to you. And I just have to say this, maybe I'll add this to the site, but uh, somebody, when he was trying to translate the word believe or faith into another language, someone came, they had been running for miles to come and deliver a message, and they collapsed on the hammock 
and said a word and went, ah, oh, when they, you know, rested on the hammock. And the word was, I'm resting all my weight right here. So he's on the hammock resting all of his weight right there. That's the word for faith, saving faith. Like you get on the hammock, you don't leave. You're resting all your weight there forever. Okay. Saving faith, with which only God can give. You must pray, trust, and hope like it's all up to God. And you must ask, seek, and knock like it's all up to you. Other terms are mentioned in regards to salvation. R repent. That is the same as I mentioned before. It is a one-time deal. You die once to sin, self, and everything. You repent once. People who are constantly repenting of sins they are stuck in are not saved. I used to really struggle with sexual sin, but God delivered me slowly even before I was saved, but I was but I always eventually fell back into it somehow, even if I even if it was way less often. After conversion, if something seems even remotely off, I ask for forgiveness and cannot fall because Jesus lives in me. The next term is being born again. Even if you think you have the next term is being born again. Even if you think you have sin beat, you are not as good as God. You need his covering and you need him to show you true holiness. How can you be holy if you are trying to be, how can you be holy if you are trying to be holy? If God, who is holiness itself, lives in you, then you will know rightly what God wants. He will tell you and do it. I wanted to say one note about people who have a big God moment and really started following him and got rid of a lot of things, that doesn't mean you are born again. It happens in a moment of time. You feel his presence, your need of him. You feel him enter you, an atom bomb goes off, and you are never the same. God does it. And you also turn from sin to him in the same moment. Jesus did not take away our obligation to God on the cross. He, he paid for our sin. We must still follow God 24-7, 200% which can only happen if you find God. Jesus didn't take away our obligation to God. He, by coming to live in us, ensures we complete it. Preachers like to tell Christians they are new creations. I can tell a broke down 20 year old car. Wait, hold on. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Preachers like to tell Christians they are new creations. I can tell a broke down 20 year old car without an engine that it's a new car, but, but if the car meets God and gets made into a new car and gets an engine, I think it would know when and how and who happened to it. Also, everyone on the road would know, hey, a new car. You are not new, you must be made new, and you will know it. If the God of the universe comes to live in you, would you remember it? Would you be the same? For God to come and live in you, you have to be clean and empty of everything. My Bible, Bible professor puts it well. The Bible says you have a wicked heart, a cobra heart. Would you want to live in a house with a loose cobra? Neither does God. He won't live in you or let you into his house, heaven unless you have a new heart. You also have a filthy past. God, God won't live in a filthy house or let that filthy person into heaven. People say Jesus People say Jesus' blood covers me. Jesus' blood covers the new car, not an old, disgusting car. The only way to get to heaven is to have Jesus in you, and he won't because you are disgusting. <laughs> yeah. The third problem... And then the three solutions. The third thing is your current life is poisonous. God doesn't want to be around sin and sin and poison. Okay. Hold on. So basically you have a cobra heart, a disgusting past and a poisonous life. And God doesn't be around that. Want to be around that unless you come to him and give it up. Give it to him. If you turn from sin and you're empty, then God will accept you. But if you hold on to the sin and come to God, no. You, it's like this. You, you go like this. You get rid of sin and accept Christ. It's Jesus, Jesus is doing it, and you're, you're reaching up, and he's reaching down. 
you're getting rid of sin and grabbing him. It's all at the same time. So, all right. Okay, so you're drowning in the ocean. What do you do? You cry for help. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But you have to also remember that many who say, Lord, Lord, will not enter heaven. The Bible doesn't contradict itself. It says elsewhere, you will find me when you seek me, when you seek for me with all your heart. As soon as you surrender and give all to Jesus, repenting and dying totally to sin, believing savingly, are born again, all that's the same stuff, then you're in. Sometimes it happens and you are in, but other times it is a process to the point of salvation. First you seek with all your heart, then you give all your heart, then you are saved and follow with all your heart. A lot of people skip the first two steps. They think, okay, Jesus died, I believe. All right, hold on. A lot of people skip the first two steps. They think, okay, Jesus died, I believe, and then they follow. You have to search for and find Jesus yourself before you are saved. The God of the universe is hidden and veiled according to the Bible. You must find him. The biggest mistake of modern Christianity is to think that Jesus did it all and I just attach myself to that idea. Jesus isn't an idea or a set of facts or the Bible. He, it's God's word, obviously. but John 5, 38-40 and you do not have his word abiding in you, for you do not believe the one whom he has sent. You search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life, and it is they that bear witness about me. Yet you refuse to come to me that you may have life. So Jesus also suffered outside the gate in order to sanctify people through his own blood. Therefore, let us go to him outside the camp and bear the reproach he endured. For here we have no lasting city, but we seek the city that is to come. We see from these verses that we are sanctified, immediately set apart by his blood, when we permanently leave the camp or everything, or leaving everything, and find him and surrender. Surrender all and repent. As the song says, Jesus paid it all. What's the next line? All Jesus paid Jesus paid it all all to him I owe we don't do that part so we're not saved <laughs> Jesus paid it all all to him I owe in a moment of time you give your life to Jesus all right so as the song Jesus paid it all what's the next line all to him I owe finding him an absolute surrender so he can wash you make you new so you want to follow him and give you the holy spirit so you so you will quoting be found spotless and blameless at his coming the bible also says without holiness no one will see god clearly speaking of our lives and actions not some mysterious belief in jesus without holiness no one will see god Clearly speaking of our actions and lives and not some mysterious belief in Jesus that doesn't, that doesn't instantly sanctify us and make us pure forever in our actions and being, but rather leaves us powerless sinners counting on God to make us clean over time rather than actually go outside the camp and repent and actually be changed forever. Jesus' blood only covers those who are holy because they've been born of God, God's Holy Spirit. Some people say you can't earn your salvation. They're right. But the Bible commands us to fight for it. We are to strive to enter through the narrow gate because many will try and won't be able. The Bible also says that from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers, suffers violence and the violent take it by force. You have to want to get saved and get in. The whole universe wants you to go to hell. We must fight to find Jesus and surrender all. We must ask, seek, and knock, and refuse to quit seeking with all our hearts until we find Jesus and are at peace. We must also pray that God save us and keep praying and trusting until he does. The Bible also says to trust in the Lord at all times. The Bible also says it is urgent. Today is the day of salvation. If you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. 
go surrender to Jesus immediately, follow whatever light you have, whatever he has shown you or you know to do, do it. We must ask God and godly people for help. We must seek in the Bible and other biblical Christian books. We must pray. We must knock by surrounding ourselves with Jesus in all we do. Trust God and seek with all your heart. And Jesus says, you will find him. That's a promise. All right, give me one second. <laughs> Sorry. Ah. I'm, it's, it's almost done. John MacArthur is a famous pastor, and he said smoking at best is a gray area. It's a gray area, smoking is. This is tobacco. It's not tobacco. It's nicotine taken from the plant. But uh, so smoking is a gray area, according to a lot of people. So. People are like, he's smoking, he can't be born again. But my whole life lines up with it, so. <laughs> By the way, the Bible says, take the log out of your eye, and then you'll be able to see clearly to take the speck out of somebody else's eye. Jesus took the log out of my eye. So I can see clearly that smoking is a gray area. <laughs> like, anyways, love you, Jesus loves you. Love you guys. All right. So if you seek God with all your heart, with all your heart and don't give up, you will find him. That's a promise in the Bible. This really helped me, the parable of the persistent widow in Luke 18. And he told them a parable to the effect that they ought always to pray and not lose heart. He said, in a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor respected man. And there was a widow in that city who kept coming to him and saying, give me justice against my adversary. For a while he refused, but afterward he said to himself, Though I neither fear God nor respect man, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will give her justice, so that she will not beat me down by her continual coming. And the Lord said, Hear what the unrighteous judge says, and will not, the, and will not God give justice to his elect, who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long over them? I tell you, he will give justice to them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? So are you going to hang in there, basically? This also helped me, John 12, 42 through 44. Nevertheless, many, even of the authorities, believed in him, but for fear of the Pharisees, they did not confess it, so that, so that they would not be put out of the synagogue, for they loved the glory that comes from man more than the glory that comes from God. So you have to, you have to, uh, <laughs> you have to love the glory that comes from God more than the glory that comes from man. We must, on our search for rebirth, get rid of all sin. This doesn't, we must, on our search for rebirth, get rid of all sin. This doesn't save us, but I think it might help us draw closer to God. And I don't know, might be good for preparing us for surrendering all to Jesus and salvation, and is part of seeking. Now, if you feel God's tug on your heart to get saved and fully commit, then do it. You know, get right with Jesus, who's God, by going to him, surrender in a moment of time. All of what I said is to bring you to a place of meeting God, and if you meet him, just take his hand and he will work it out. 2 Thessalonians 1.8, in flaming fire, inflicting vengeance on those who do not know God and obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. Jesus will say to many Christians, I never knew you. To know God is to be fully committed to him and him to you. It is like being married. You remember your wedding. You realized everything is different. You obey your husband. If you haven't surrendered all on the wedding commitment altar and marry Jesus, it's impossible to obey him. 
you don't know him, so you don't or can't obey him. You can't. You don't know him, so you don't and can't obey him. Without Jesus in you, without Jesus, the author of the Bible, living in you and directing you, and being born of God, it's impossible to follow someone you don't know. When God looks at you, he all right. <laughs> People say, when God looks at you, he sees Jesus. Really? God isn't blind. If you are truly born again and Jesus lives in you, he will see Jesus and your holy life. Then at the point when Jesus, then at the point when Jesus entered you, his blood covered you. So once Jesus comes in you, and then his blood covers you, and you'll live a holy life because you have the Holy Spirit. So when Jesus entered you, his blood covers you when he enters you. If you are not completely holy and completely devoted, God sees a sinner going to hell because it is impossible for Jesus to be in you. A ton of people are going to learn the difference between in you and with you when it is too late. And the difference, so there's a difference between God being with you and God being, being in you. A ton of people are going to learn the difference between in you and with you when it's too late. And the difference between called and chosen. See, people hear God. People, A lot of people follow Jesus and feel Jesus doing stuff in their life. And they're going to go to hell because they're called, not chosen. So make sure. You have to be a Christian to go to heaven. And I think 97% of Christians have never found Jesus. You have to be Christian to go to heaven, and I think 97% of Christians have never found Jesus and are going to hell. Famous people long ago used to spend countless hours and years seeking God, trying to be saved. Now it's just a quick, meaningless prayer where nothing changes and back to normal. We must find God and warn others who, are, who bear the name of Christian but have no Christ. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Jesus didn't take away our duty to God. He made it possible through his death and upon true salvation, his indwelling Holy Spirit. We do all things by faith in Jesus, even our seeking for him. Love you, Jesus loves you. Jesus. <laughs>